Good morning. Today is the 17th. Okay. Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And Jethro said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. Exodus 18, 13 through 18. Moses loved his people and sought to magnify the calling that God had given to him as the leader of the Israelite nation. But there was a vital lesson Moses and all others after Moses needed to learn. Namely, no man can handle it all by himself. Jethro taught Moses the marvelous leadership principle of delegation. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. And that's Exodus 1820. Uh, the prophet Joseph Smith later voiced the same principle. Uh, I teach them correct principles and they govern themselves. And I suppose that's a lesson for parenting. Teach them right principles and, and they should govern themselves. Okay. So, <clears throat> today is, um, oh, sometimes I hate my hair in the morning, I just gotta deal with it. Okay, today is Genesis 20, and the spice continues, the, the, the sauciness, if you will. So, uh, Abraham goes into a new country, and again... He says that Sarah, his wife, is his sister. The king takes her again. And, uh, but before he knows her, the Lord comes to him in a dream and says, uh, you're about to die. You're as good as a dead man because the woman you have taken, she's somebody's wife. And in the dream, he says, I didn't know that. Are you going to, are you going to slay an innocent person and in an innocent nation because some guy lied to me? And the Lord's like, no. Just give her back. So in the morning, the king called all his servants and they gathered up the household and they gathered up flocks and herds and cattle, sheep, goats, whatever. And then called Abraham and said, why did you lie to me? And Abraham's like, there was no fear of the Lord in this place. And I was afraid that you guys were going to kill me if you knew she was my wife. And the king was like, here, take all this stuff, take your wife. My land is before you. Go. And uh, and that's pretty much the chapter. Um, now, this is the second time it has happened where Abraham has said, no, she's my sister, not my wife. And you're, you're wondering, you remember what happened last time, Abraham. Why would you do this again? Why would you trick a king again? But when he says that the fear of the Lord was not in the place, you kind of wonder if that was the purpose, the point to, you know, now this king has the fear of the Lord in him. He ha his household has the fear of the Lord in them. Um, you know, maybe it's something that, like, um, is it like when you threaten kids if you do not clean this living room you will not get dessert you know and so they've they've got that fear in them not that they want to be obedient to begin with and they weren't going to be obedient to begin with but they want their dessert and so they're going to clean the living room and so you know he wasn't righteous to begin with but now he has this fear that the lord is going to kill him and destroy his country, his nation, if he takes another man's wife ever again. You know, I don't know. Um, the side-by-side -side commentary skips right over it. But let's see what the Ludlow has to say. Um, so in verse 7, it uses the word prophet. And this is the first of hundreds of times the word prophet is used in the Bible. Spencer W. Kimball has written concerning a prophet. 
To be a prophet of the Lord, one does not need to be everything to all men. He does not need to be youthful or athletic or industrialist or a financer or an agriculturalist. He does not need to be a musician, a poet, an entertainer, a banker, a physician, a college president, a military general, or a scientist. He does not need to be a linguist and speak French and Japanese, German and Spanish, but he must understand the divine language and be able to receive messages from heaven. He need not be an orator, orator, of, for God can make his own. The Lord can present his divine message through weak men made strong. He subtly, wait, he substituted a strong voice for the quiet, timid one of Moses, and he gave the young man Enoch power that made men tremble in his presence, for Enoch walked with God as Moses walked with God. And then in 16, uh, uh, the clause, he is to thee a covering of the eyes. This is what the king says to Sarah when he's giving her back to Abraham. He's like, I gave, because technically Abraham and Sarah are half brother and sister. He says, I gave your brother a thousand pieces of silver. He is to thee a covering of the eyes. And... Um, it reads in the Joseph Smith translation, he shall give unto thee a covering of the, of the eyes, which I'm still not quite sure what that means. Um, and that is really all for chapter 20. Uh, so that's Genesis chapter 20, and tomorrow is 21, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Bye! Bye!